OK, good morning, everyone. We are on the record. Today is Monday. August 16th, 2021. This is a regular scheduled meeting of caucus meeting of the Municipal Council in effort to adhere to social distancing protocols and best practices imposed by the city and state authorities. The city of Jersey City has canceled all public meetings and closed non-essential services as of March 16th, 2020 until further notice. As a result, this council caucus will be held virtually as a video conference with public access. We had a scheduled 10 a.m. start. The clock on my computer is showing 10.04 a.m. May I have a roll call for the commencement of this caucus? Councilperson Ridley. Not here. Councilperson Prenzeri. Not here yet. Councilperson Good Baggiano. Here. Yeah. Okay. Councilperson Delay. Not here yet. Councilperson Solomon. Not here. Councilperson Robinson. Here. Not here. Oh, you're here. I didn't see you. Okay. Councilperson Lavaro. Here. Councilperson Rivera. Here. And Council President Waterman. Here. We have five council members in attendance at 10.04 a.m. In addition, at its time of its preparation, the agenda of this meeting was similarly disseminated on Friday, August 13th, 2021 at 5.20 p.m. to the mayor, council, business administrator, and the newspapers and posted on the city's website so I can certify as to our total compliance with the Sunshine Law. Council President, would you like me to take it from the top? Take it from the top, Sean. OK. Thank you very much. So our first item is item 3.1 City Ordinance 21-048, an ordinance authorizing the execution and acceptance from 160 Lafayette Associates LP, a deed of easements, excuse me, for a temporary construction easement and a public access easement in connection with the construction and use of the Mars Canal Greenway. Who's here to explain it? Good morning, Council. How are you? Um, this would be the last piece of the easement needed to get the Morris Canal Greenway off the ground. Um, it is just a small piece. There is no money exchanged. Um, this would be basically just us doing the maintenance, uh, which we would obviously have to do for the Morris Canal Greenway, uh, no matter how you dice it. OK, any questions? OK, thank you, Paul. Next, Sean. Of course. OK. <laughs> Item 3.2, City Ordinance 21-055, an ordinance authorizing the sale of an easement to the state of New Jersey Department of Transportation affecting real property owned by the city of Jersey City and the city of Union City in Block 101, Lot 7 near Sea Caucus Road in Jersey City. Is that Paul again or me again? Okay, uh, Paul. Yeah, so, so uh, you know, DOT absolutely needs this. Realistically, they they would take it eminent do domain if they had to to do this bridge project. Um, it's it's a sewer outlet for Jersey City and Union City, uh, so it's not like the city would expect to get more money for this plot of land if it was sold to another party. Um, it really could not be used for anything else. Um, and as I said, the, the state absolutely needs this uh, to complete their their work. Um, so it's it's a fair price for a good purpose. Okay. Questions? OK, thanks, Paul. <clears throat> Thank you. OK, next one. Paul, stand by. Um, 3.3 <laughs> City Ordinance 21-056 is an ordinance supplementing Chapter 332, Vehicles and Traffic, Article 2, Traffic Regulations, Section 332-9, Stop Intersections to designate Hutton Street and Cambridge Avenue, Hutton Street and Hancock Avenue and Clinton Avenue and Sackett Street as a multi-way stop control. Okay. Okay. 
Next, mm -hmm. item 3.4, City Ordinance 21-057 is an ordinance supplementing Chapter 332, Vehicles and Traffic, Article 9, Parking for the Disabled of the Jersey City Code, designating reserved parking space at various locations throughout the city. Okay, Andrew, I guess. You know this. Good morning, Council. Uh, these addresses um, were all approved by the Handicap uh, Reserved Parking Committee, um, and they constitute approvals from the last three meetings. Okay. Okay. Go ahead, Sean. Okay. Next is item 3.5, City Ordinance 21-058. An ordinance supplementing Chapter 332, Vehicles and Traffic, Article 2, Traffic Regulations, Section 332-9, stop intersections to designate Concord Street and St. Paul's Avenue, Bevan Street and St. Paul's Avenue, Park Street, Nashville Place, and Jersey Avenue and Wayne Street as stop control intersections. Hmm. Any questions? Um, Andrew, is this um, related to some of the uh, work with um, St. Paul's Avenue uh, up towards uh, Tunley, or is it? Uh... Uh, no, Council. This uh, Councilman, this is um, separate requests. Uh, I believe they came through C-Click Fix. Okay, appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Next. All right. Thanks, Council. Council President. Um, item 3.6, City Ordinance 21-059, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Jersey City in the County of Hudson, State of New Jersey, authorizing the acceptance of a condominium unit located within the property commonly, commonly identified on the tax, map, tax maps of the city as block 15802 lot 1.01 c 8001 from 100 monitor street llc thank you sean uh, good morning council um, good morning. so presenting here is um the ordinance uh accepting the um <coughs> excuse me uh accepting the uh redevelopment agreement uh with iron state um, in that redevelopment agreement, um, this condo unit was to be used for public use. Um, <clears throat> the city decided that this this best function for this uh, individual uh, condominium unit is uh, for public library uh, in pursuant to that public space. So we're asking for the deed to be uh, sent over to the city for the build out of the Monitor Street Lafayette um, Library. Um, this this property would be um, we're working with the Jersey City Par Public Library. Um, we were going to um, build and then the um, Jersey City Library will uh, fit in all of their technology and, and uses. Um, some of the uses that we're looking to use this for are technic uh, technology based, um, you know, STEM related, as well as a community room for uh, senior meetings and, and, and community events. So it'll be a really a, a great uh, program in partnership with the public library that will have um, everything from youth programming all the way up to senior uh, programming in the same space so they kind of coincide um, and then also with the use of some of the more uh, new technology that's out there for uh, stem related projects for the students and, and adult as, adults as well um, including a recording studio so um, this uh, would allow us to do the build out uh, for the library and then the library will come in and do the programming and the, uh, the costs associated with the um, technology and infrastructure. Questions? Um, John, uh, this is Councilman Labarro. Uh, so the um, the city accepts the unit and then we, we lease it out to, um, th th we have ownership of it? Is that what this is at the end of the day or is it? Uh... Yeah, correct Councilman. So, so we would own it and then we'd have an agreement with the library to occupy the space and the council has the right to, you know, um, however long they want that lease to uh, be provided, um, you know, to continue the space. Um, there is some significant build out uh, involved. Um, it's basically an empty shell, so to speak, right now. So um, we're going to help them, you know, build some of the walls and some of the uh, uh, interior product and then they're going to put a significant investment into it. So, you know, a long term uh, 
um, a long-term lease wouldn't be out of, out of the uh, picture for something like that. And um, we would retain ownership of the facility. And in accepting the unit, is there any cost to the city or is it um, deeded to us? Uh, uh, no, nope, Councilman, it's deeded to us uh, for public use. Uh, that was part of the redevelopment program. Okay. And that was with Iron State. <clears throat> And then in terms of the improvements, I, I know you said that uh, there'll be uh, substantial cost. Sorry, my phone is ringing, excuse me. Um, let me see if I can stop that. All right. Um, so um, the, the, the cost of the uh, improvements to the facility itself to build out the shell, um, build it in the shell, I guess, uh, uh, who's assuming that cost? So uh, for retaining walls, uh, flooring, um, those associated costs, the city um, would be doing that through our capital pro program, um, just mm -hmm. because we'll, we'll retain ownership of it. So it's improvements for our own, um, you know, uh, facility. And then anything that they need to retrofit for their uh, library needs will be covered by the library. And we've had ongoing conversation with them. They do have the funding sources available uh, to facilitate their end of it. Sure. Um, in um, in the so is that currently that, that those funds that the city would would uh, outlay um, for that? Uh, do we currently have that uh, budgeted in our capital? Uh, yes, current? we do, Councilman. It's in it's in the previous um, one of the previous bonds uh, for infrastructure. Uh, the the cost estimates that we have are, are approximately two hundred thousand dollars for that. Okay. I have no further questions. I yield my time. Okay. Anyone else? OK, Sean. All righty. <clears throat> Item 3.7, City Ordinance 21-060 is an ordinance authorizing the City of Jersey City to execute a lease with Greenville Neighborhood Alliance for the use of Block 3003, Lot 45, more commonly known by the street address of 81 Garfield Avenue for use as a community garden. Okay, so if you have any questions. Yeah, so this community garden, it sat dormant for the last uh, two years uh, due to um, the family that was coordinating the Can You Dig It garden moved away and their organization had since moved as well. The Greenville Neighborhood Association would like to lease this garden so that multiple block associations in the neighborhood could utilize it. We've discussed with them also um, the possibility of a compost pilot there. Uh, we're working on that with uh, Sonia and uh, the Office of Sustainability. Okay. Any questions? Okay, Sean. Last first reading ordinance, item 3.8, city ordinance 21-0. 061, an ordinance amending Chapter 69, Special Improvement Districts, Article 6, Exchange Place, Special Improvement District, clarifying and reinforcing that any contracts for the improvement of any public, publicly owned or operated facility or property within the district can only be entered into and any regulations relating to public property in the district may only be adopted with the consent of the City Council via Council Resolution. Uh, okay. Council, Council President, this is a, an ordinance that I introduced. May I speak to that? Yeah, please do. Sure. Um, so, Council members, and can, can I should clerk, uh, can we scroll down to the portion that's a very small amendment um, to this section of the code? Can you scroll down to it so it's visible on the screen for everyone? Okay. So uh, uh, as you can see, there's um, council members, uh, chapter 69 addresses special improvement districts. Mm -hmm. um, each article of the special improvement district chapter um, addresses mm -hmm. each uh, special improvement district. Article six is the exchange place special improvement district. Mm -hmm. um, under um, section 76 mm -hmm. of chapter 69, it talks about municipal powers retained. 
Um, so the, the council has had in the past um, for years now has been um, discussing this issue of uh, the Exchange Place Alliance, the, the Katzine Memorial statue, um, the issues related to that and the improvements being done there and the questions that have been raised about um, public access to the, the properties and so forth. And um, there, there seems to be, and, and, and really this has only come up among all the SIDs um, with, with Exchange Place. Um, oh. And so uh, w with regard to kind of public access, and I mean, th there have been some disputes with historic downtown SID, yeah. but it's really gotten pretty, um, pretty more uh, public as well as just uh, yeah. um, contentious, I guess, around the Exchange Place issue. Um, and so uh, in reviewing the SID um, language and, and enabling language, and there's similar language in every SID, um, with the exception of Central Avenue, um, about the municipal powers retained, um, mm -hmm. it indicates there that, um, I'm sorry, could you bring that up again, um, Sean? I'm sorry, I apologize, I just want to read that language out. So um, under bullet point C, um, it says the district management corporation shall not make or enter into any contracts for the improvement of any publicly owned or operated facility or property within the special improvement district, nor adopt any regulations relating to public property in such district without the consent of the city. Um, and so it doesn't specify, specify city council, but my, mm -hmm. my layman's interpretation would assume that that would be um, the city council's consent. Um, and so I'm writing an amendment here to clarify that language. Um, to ensure that uh, um, it's clear that it's city council. Um, now, look, I, I know that uh, this may seem like it's um, unfairly targeting the SID exchange yes. place, um, but, but the reality is exchange place is the only district that has the resources to be able to do any public improvements on public lands, right? And they're the only ones proposing it, frankly, to spend their money on that for that purpose. Um, and, and frankly, given this language, and I, I would argue, mm -hmm. we've been told that this is going that, that there would be a public meeting for the community, and that there would be it would go before planning. Mm -hmm. But I would argue that that's not sufficient, and not just for Exchange Place, but for anyone who's doing public work on any public properties. Um, for exchange. no no private entity should just be able to go in and be able to. Um, go about the process of them doing improvements to land, even if they were spending their own money without getting the consent of the city um, in advance, which is already in the ordinance. And so this ordinance simply clarifies it to make it clear that it is the city council and that that should be approved by an authorizing resolution. Now we may want to, the city council may choose to just defer and say, you know, we defer to you and whatever process you want to undertake on that and, and decision mm -hmm. and, and design you want to do, we'll do that. Um, but we should do it knowingly and, and willingly um, and, and do that, not accidentally or passively allowing that to happen. Um, I believe it's our, our duty as a city council to ensure that we protect public our public lands um, and ensure that uh, there's um, that any public lands are subject to ensuring that uh, the public has opportunities for comment and, and input and that we, we have some control over that, that we control that process, not some, we should control that process. Um, but I, I recognize that it's a, a, it's a mutual partnership Correct. with a, an exchange place alliance or any private entity who's essentially footing the bill, right, yeah. um, for our public improvements. Um, and so there's give and take there. Um, mm -hmm. This does not say that uh, the city council shall, um, uh, shall be the final determiner or whatever, but there should be some resolution, I think, that would lay out the the, uh, the process and procedures by which authorization should happen for these contracts uh, for improvement, whether it's the, mm -hmm. the architecture contract, whether it's the engineers, et cetera. And maybe it's just, we have to just agree on the design and then you go ahead and get the contracts and do whatever you want. Um, I'm not gonna get into the weeds on that in this ordinance, that's not uh, my intention here. It's just, just to say that uh, we should bring this back to the city council and make sure that um, that uh, the uh, th that this is clear what this uh, that we outline this process going forward on the as it pertains mm -hmm. particularly to exchange place. Um, so let me ask you a question, Rolando. You just want to do exchange place, but don't all the SIDs follow the same guidelines? So I think you should 
have a conversation with all of them before we do something like this? Because I don't want exchange based to then come back and felt like, OK, we're just doing them. What about yeah. the other SIDs and we follow the guidelines? So I think it's important I, I, that, I think you know, we meet with the other SIDs and, and get all of them involved. To be perfectly honest, it's just a fair thing to do. Now, I know we always had conversations with the uh, SIDs. It's always two or three um, residents that or constituents that have a problem with them. I mean, I've been down there. I, I spoke to some of the uh, Polish community. They understand um, with the statute. They know it's not being moved. But yet we constantly get two or three uh, people who call in and complain it. So I don't know if it's a personal thing with them and the SID or the SID with them. And I try not to get involved with that because I do speak to the Polish community. And they said they're not a part of that. So I don't want to get involved with the infight that sometimes community people have. So if we're going to do something like this, it should be across the board. I don't want to get involved with that because somehow or another it seemed like we're getting involved saying we on this side and not on that side and we should just really be fair across the board with all the SIDs and all the SIDs need to have, uh, we need to meet with them and say, well, this is the next move that we're going to take concerning, you know, you guys going out for anything. You know, I just think that's the fair approach because with this will definitely sure. come back. And like I said, I, I've been down there. Okay. I think it's Joyce, this somehow. May, another. may I respond to that, uh, Council President? Um, sure. So um, I, I'm fine with uh, having a conversation with the entire, all the SIDs okay. around us, and and I think this yeah. should be applied to everybody. And I, okay. I think it already does apply to everybody. And from my reading of the other mm -hmm. uh, SID ordinances as well, um, their language it does apply again, with the exception of Central Avenue, which I believe did not have any language. Um, directly related and they're the oldest one so they probably didn't have that um, put the in time. initially when they uh, established their SID. Um, that that being said, um, the exchange place and, and I'm not looking to take sides. I don't even know which Me side neither. is which at this point That's right. um, in, that, in that whole thing. But, but what I am concerned about is simply the idea that um, this process that that's, and, and this precedent that's being established that says uh, that um, Privately, um, private uh, resources, dollars, um, are being used to improve our public lands, and that the city council, which is already written into the law, says that the city that the city needs to give consent um, prior right. to any of these contracts being entered into. And right now, there's contracts been entered into um, for architecture, landscaping, for mm -hmm. engineering, etc. Um, I'm not privy to all of that stuff. You are, as a member mm -hmm. of the board. Um, but they right. didn't. They did not seek the city's consent, and, and I would say having you on the board is not um, mm -hmm. uh, necessarily. And no disrespect intended. That, that would be for okay. every board. Is mm -hmm. that that's not that's a formal official consent by the city in any way to authorize their uh, their various contracts? And I think that they should uh, um, do that. I'm I'm happy to have that conversation, um, and mm -hmm. I would want to propose this: is is that we. I'm happy to have that conversation with all the SIDs um, around that, clarify that language and make it clear. I'm even willing to withdraw this ordinance, um, but I would ask that we we send from the city council um, via our law department some sort of uh, notice to them that these these contracts, if, if they've mm -hmm. even, even if they've already been entered into, that they be um, that they be vetted by the city council and, and uh, that we approve them in some way or form. I don't know if it's necessarily yeah. how, how that's taken, but it's again, I would also suggest by all council resolution um, mm -hmm. that it be done because that's how we normally approve any right. contract for any public park improvement, um, whether it's Audubon Park or whether it's been the reservoir or any other uh, public park in the city. And this is a public public park. Yeah. You know, so. I, I don't have a problem with that, but I do want it stated on the record too, even though, um, when it comes to the SID, there is a council person that is on each board. And also, it's always an invitation to the rest of the council to come to the meetings. And I know various times when conversations was going on about this SID, I invited the council to come to some of the meetings. That I did. So you can get an understanding of what's going on because a lot of times we're hearing one side, but we're not there. And so that's why this, this council was invited to go to those meetings. Now, and it is our responsibility if, if it is our interest to show up to these meetings, if that's something we have a concern about. And um, I see your point, 
but I, I think that all the SIDs must be involved with this. I don't think this is a fair uh, ordinance just going to one. I believe that, sure, they could come back and we could vote or whatever. It must be all of them across the board, and we must have a conversation with them to let them know this is the next step in um, the SID um, laws that we're going forward with. Forward with. Yeah, so uh, as I said, I'll, I'll go, go ahead, Councilman Bojano. What this should be pulled. We should have further discussions. Yesterday was a perfect example. We had a huge parade and we couldn't go to exchange place where all the multitude could have been, had uh, room to move around. And we had to enter that city hall. It should be. Uh, I don't know why we had to hold. do that because I thought, it, I thought everything was open. I thought it was going to be by the waterfront. I don't know. I don't okay. know. Danny, they gave you a hard time going by that waterfront. Councilman Rivera has made it clear that uh, this is what the Puerto Rican Parade Committee wanted. That, that, oh, that they, okay. they didn't want to be at the exchange okay. place, uh, and this is the location okay. they wanted. So but they can't. It's not their responsibility to to stop any event. That's culture affairs. Everything has to be approved um, based on that process. So when I, I keep hearing that exchange place is not letting anyone go um, down there, I think we need to ask culture affairs what is the process because that's what people do. They put in the application through culture affairs. And that's what it goes, it, you know, it goes through that process. You know, the waterfront is public property and everybody uh, should be able to go down there. I, I mean, I, I was down there Saturday I, night. It, it was I the memorial we, or the, the, the Akantia Memorial. I was there Saturday. They were I out think, there. I think we should stay focused on what we're talking about. Right, right. Of, right. To parade routes. It's very important that we do that. You know? So, so, so Council President, um, again, just um, I, I'm fine with doing that, but what I'd ask the city council, and if I, if we could, um, we don't, we don't need a resolution to do this. If we can um, agree to instruct our our law department to inform them that they need to um, present their 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 contracts that they've undertaken for the improvement of uh, Exchange Place, um, whether they've been entered into these contracts already or not, um, that they be presented to the city council for the city council's. Uh, consent essentially for around that, which is again, it's it's written into the law, so it's not a, um, it's it would be after the fact at this point, but um, um, we we should at least be able to vet them, and any future contract should be vetted by uh, by the city council. And, and my hope is, and 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 I want to be clear, it, it would not be the idea of a contentious um, review of that, right? Um, it's a partnership, and so I would not want to suggest otherwise. But what I want to make just clear through this is that. There is a process um, by which this is done for public properties, more so than like private properties. The, the whole thing with, and I, I've spoken with um, architecture and, um, are, and um, discussing kind of improvements to other lands throughout Jersey City before putting this forward, is that you know when we look at things like the Cole Street Park, and I think we last year we approved something, I think it was on Green Street. Um, mm -hmm. Those things never came before the city council when they did those improvements, but that's because those were privately owned lands. Um, they were privately owned and they were doing private improvements on it. And then, then there were some agreements um, with the private uh, entities that were done through the planning board, I believe, and so forth, um, that didn't need to come to the city council because that was all conditioned on their on their site plan approvals and things of that nature. Um, this is different in that sense. It's uh, These are public lands um, and, and the law is clear on public lands. Uh, that's why we have the authority on budgeting and everything else from the capital budget, et cetera. And, and that's no different for, for private dollars that are being used to improve uh, public lands. Um, and so I would just say we should just exert our, um, our authority around that, not, not, mm -hmm. not impose it, not try to, um, to, uh, to hammer them with it or anything like that. That's not the intention here, but it's just to ensure that we, we maintain our, our, our authority as uh, as the stewards of uh, public okay. properties and public lands. Okay, I, I understand. Um, I don't have a problem to do that, but I would want it done for all the SIDs across the board sure. that have this clause in there. Yep. The law department, you would have to see which one has the clause and they have to, a letter will have to go out to all of them that have that clause. And then we would have to figure out how we have to add Central Avenue. Okay, yep, we, that's we, we across the board. Team. We can work with the BA. So office. you can withdraw this one. You'll withdraw this one, and then that's how we'll do it, Law Department. All right, we'll work with, we will work with the BA's office and purchasing to uh, determine what needs to be done there, if anything, and uh, 
we'll follow up with the council and um, proceed from there. But just to be clear, so if if the other, we, we have to have extensive conversations with respect to this with the other SIDs. So if they're not comfortable with it, you know, what are we going to, what are we going to do if, if the other SIDs are not comfortable with, with this across the board? Well, I guess then we have to come back and have another conversation because this is what it is right now, because he wants to present this for one SID and it's, it's not fair for one SID. That's why I said to have a meeting. Yeah. You can have a meeting with all SIDs be... and we can have a, once you have a meeting and a conversation with the SIDs, then we'll know which route to take, really. I would be but surprised. They don't even know, huh? I, I I would be surprised. It's already written in with the, again with the exception of Central right. Avenue. It's already written into their ordinances. This is just a clarification of that right. um, to make it more explicit. Um, as I've said, they're 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 not even um, they have not proposed any changes or improvements to public right. lands and using their their private do their their SID dollars for that purpose. Um, the the one of the more um, financially more uh, better off uh, SIDs historic downtown with the six million dollar improvements that were done to are being done to the pedestrian plaza that was city dollars um, mm -hmm. just an example right and um, I don't think that they would uh, say that the, the city should spend six million dollars um, and just give it to them as a blank check and let them write decide how they're going to build that and fix that we we did in fact uh, the mayor held public meetings along with councilman Solomon uh, to get public input and all that other stuff, but that was all run by the city, right? That was um, okay. that process was driven by the city um, and, our, right. and our staff and other folks were involved in that as opposed to the SID itself directing it. And I think they probably welcome that as because they don't have themselves the resources to run that process. The exchange place is unique in and of itself because it has so many resources um, and is prepared yeah. to make those, those changes, uh, those improvements themselves. So, so Peter, you'll, you'll follow up with, on, yeah. with respect to both issues, meaning amending ordinances for all the SIDs, but also notifying Correct. the SI Exchange Place Alliance that they need to um, present their their resolute their their contracts uh, to the council for for our uh, review and uh, consent, as the ordinance specifies. Well, we'll review what's been submitted and we'll follow up appropriately. Okay. Okay, I, I, when, 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 what, I, I'm going to ask if, um, uh, because this process is moving quickly with the exchange place, so I think it's important that we uh, get some time timelines on this or deadlines. Can you give me an idea of when, um, on, on the exchange place notification piece, how soon we can move forward with that? Uh, I think, you know, we'll move forward with due speed. Um, I, I would say, you know, this week, I think we can probably get a lot of this accomplished. Great, that'd be perfect. Thank you, Peter. Okay. So Can until I then, you withdraw point? this one? Yeah. Yes, I, I will withdraw. Okay. All right, very good, thank you. All right. Moving on to the second reading ordinances. Are there any questions on any of the second readings? Oh, um, so council members, um, I've been emailing you and calling you uh, and uh, appreciate your patience with me. Um, I did want to propose a number of amendments, non substantial in na nature, to Ordinance 21 053, um, item number 4.2 on the agenda. Um, this is the cannabis ordinance. Um, Sean, I could share my screen or, uh, or you could share, which, how would you like to do that? Sean had to step out, but um, there you okay. go. Okay. See it up there. What's that? Did the whole council see this? The, uh, I believe, all right, Councilman, are you sharing your screen? No. Have you um, I can it? share my screen if you want. Okay. It's the actual proposed amendments. It's not in there right now. I don't think it is, uh, unless, unless you guys added it already. Did you add it already, John, or? I did not, no. Okay. So I, I can I can share my screen if you like, uh, um, which I emailed out to everyone just this morning, the summary, but I emailed an earlier version last week um, and then it's been updated today um, with a summary document that was uh, provided to me by uh, planning. Um, I'm sorry, by, by the law department rather, my apologies. 
Uh, give me one second while I pull that up. Um, okay. I'm going to share my screen if I may. Are you able to see it? Hold on one second. OK, council members, I'm proposing a, a number of amendments to the uh, cannabis um, ordinance. Can you see my screen? I don't hear anyone. Are you able to see my screen? Can I get a? Yeah, we can see it. OK. OK. Great. So um, the, the first uh, amendment at the top here, um, Section uh, 84-49, product display and storage, mobile structure prohibited. Um, and then it adds some language signage for class five retail. And so it says here in uh, added bullet point uh, C, class five cannabis retailers must post visible signage within the retail establishment about age requirements and the prohibition of using cannabis on city streets, sidewalks, and parks. Class five retailers that are not consumption areas must also post signage that using cannabis within retail facility is prohibited. So um, that is um, two, two parts there essentially. Um, one is uh, ensuring that there's signage there just to, uh, for my protection of minors and to prevent um, and dissuade minors from attempting to um, uh, purchase uh, cannabis, which is illegal. Um, we do the same thing for cigarettes and alcohol sales. And so this would just simply um, follow in, in that regard. And then the second thing is, again, this is a new industry and a new market. Um, happening and so the the rules with regard to prohibition of use on on city streets and sidewalks um, out in um, public rights of way in that sense um, you know I'm sure there is a inclination for folks as they purchase to come right out and possibly light up just like you probably do with a cigarette or something like that but um, um, since it's prohibited on city streets and sidewalks and parks um, that signage would make it clear and make sure that people understand what the rules are there as they're as they're as they're acquiring and purchasing it right those are the folks you want to have see those those rules and then the second part of that is that um you know uh, unless they have a consumption area license they're technically and legally not re uh, permitted to um, consume smoke consume their um their product cannabis product within the facility unless they have a consumption license as well and so that just makes it explicit and clear so that there's no um you know Mis, uh, misunderstanding or mis uh, abuse of that um, in that regard. Um, the second um, amendment is to uh, section 52 of the proposed uh, ordinance. And this is a section where it um, says under section D um, what the applicant is requ requested to submit um, for their application. And there's a whole series of things. And then you can see in red and underlined um, is that uh, um, it's requiring, and this is addressing the idea of child care facilities um, and, and proximity there. So I had reached out to you earlier, a uh, couple of about 10 weeks, 10 days ago to two weeks ago, 10 to 14 days ago. Um, my concern that uh, while we have a 200 foot buffer for schools, uh, meaning that there should not be uh, uh, any cannabis um, establishment and can or cannabis distributor within 200 feet of a school, that uh, that prohibition, that buffer zone did not apply to child care providers and substance abuse treatment facilities. Um, I, I would assume that uh, most folks would think it would be uh, inappropriate to have it um, right outside of a substance abuse treatment facility or within too close a proximity. Uh, folks who are uh, dealing with substance abuse um, uh, and seeking recovery around that, uh, um, it would not be conducive to that, uh, uh, to, to, to their to their recovery efforts. Um, and then secondly, I think uh, parents and most would agree that uh, the, the child care provider is providing again some sort of buffer there um, within 200 feet. But since um, we can't amend the ordinance to allow for that buffer because that would be a substantial change, um, this requires that the, um, in number 12, that they provide a list of child care providers and substance abuse treatment facilities 
that they obtain from HHS um, that would be within 200 feet to provide that to the Cannabis Control Board. Um, and then in number 14, it says that uh, um, under that same in red, the Cannabis Control Board may require that class five retail applicant to address concerns about the proximity of a proposed location to a substance abuse treatment facility or daycare provider, and that the board may consider the applicant's response to those concerns in its decision. So it simply says that they may do all of that, and that, um, 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 but um, certainly puts the uh, some of the onus on the applicant, the cannabis business applicant, um, to be able to make that uh, information publicly available and provide transparency in that regard. And then the last amendment um, was brought to me by a constituent, and I believe you may have reached out to a number of you as well. Um, uh, the micro businesses um, that the, the state law permits uh, the um, micro businesses to be um, reduced um, for um, uh, by half. Um, the micro businesses, um, as I understand it, uh, is a way of getting local residents to be able to um, participate in this uh, new emerging industry, cannabis industry in Jersey City. And um, and so the, the laws even don't allow the same um, limit the amount of space that they can have for these sort of micro businesses um, and the amount of product, I believe, as well, that can be um, sold um, as well. So it kind of limits their um, profits in that regard, um, but um, opens up opportunities for them as well. And um, again, if we're, we're talking about social equity and then that's the aim there um, with this whole micro business um, piece of uh, the legislation, then this allows us to lower some of the barriers to entry by reducing the fees to half of whatever the uh, fees are, including the consumption license, um, which is uh, currently the micro cannabis consumption license is 25,000. So that's a hefty chunk to do. Um, and so this would half that, uh, that fee uh, for, the, for the consumption license as well. Uh, any questions, council members, or happy to take questions? Let me ask one question, Rolando. Um, when it comes to the retail space, if a cannabis um, retail is already in operation, a daycare could not open up, correct? Um, a daycare could not open up within 200 feet of them? Right. If they're already there, if they're, if they're there first. No, I mean, th this doesn't prohibit either one of them from opening up, frankly. It just says that it should be factored into their decision making. Um, oh, okay. the DB and to provide the information. Uh, unfortunately, to, 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 to put that amendment in would be a substantial change. Gotcha. Um, I would like to see it, but it would be a substantial change of the ordinance. And uh, that's why I was hoping uh -huh. we could get a special meeting around that, but um, we won't be able to effectuate that and still meet the August 21st deadline. All right. Okay. I don't have no questions. I, I think it, I, I, it sounds reasonable to me. I don't have a question. <laughs> Well, I don't have Anyone any questions else? either, but I, I do have a couple of comments and um, I couldn't agree with the council uh, at large, councilman at large more. Uh, that 200 feet should definitely be considered around um, daycares. But what I, the question I have, and I think it's about the micro businesses and, you know, the south side of the city, that 200 feet from residential is going to, because that's eight houses. If you look at a 25 by a 25 by 100 house, a lot here, that's eight houses. So if you look at it like that, 200 feet from a residence, I think that is like a bit much when you look at trying to make sure that the south side of the city, the micro businesses and the social equity really takes place. And so I think that uh, the councilman said that would be a substantial change. So it probably we wouldn't be something that we would look to do now. But I think that 200 feet is really large when it comes to just plain residents. I think 100 feet would be something, you know, probably better or more manageable for houses. I don't think you get to smell the consumption. Plus you have to be, I think, 15 feet away from the gate anyway from your property line. So right now it makes it 215 feet from any residential. The, the other question I had was for the 50 feet from a rooftop deck. Is that 50 feet property line or is it like floors or both? Um, I don't know who would be able to answer that. Is So would you have to be five stories above any residential place? Because when I look at downtown rooftops, it's like they're sitting on, you know, some of them are sitting on top of, 
you know, a residential space. And I believe that, you know, the more outdoor spaces we have, the better, because when you look at, you know, the federal funded housing, people like the, you know, the housing authority and affordable housing, like it's going to be illegal for them to smoke inside, you know, the projects or city parks on the streets at all. So to try to make this something where, you know, that, that all people can use, I think we have to think about that, especially like the federal funded housing, like the Booker T. Washington and Gloria Robinson, things like that. So the consumption lounge, I think we should probably think about the resident that 100 feet and especially 200 feet from schools and daycares, I get it. Uh, but just a regular resident, it's going to limit us and handcuff us. And I don't know if we have a map to show exactly where you know, a business would be able to open within the 200 feet. And I think the councilman touched on as well that 25,000 for a consumption and along with the 15,000 for a resident, uh, 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 just a distributor, that's going to be $40,000 a year, which is probably going to handcuff a lot of the micro businesses that we're so trying to help. I don't know if these are all substantial changes, but it definitely needs to be something that we look at to, you know, make sure we take care of the south side of the city. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Okay, we can I ask, you, can, I ask Peter, can I ask Peter? Mm -hmm. it, will those all be substantial changes that hundred no. feet, two hundred feet? Um, and this 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 money for the you know minority businesses to operate forty thousand a year seems to be a whole lot. And we just like I said, the the I'm thinking about the housing projects, or I'm thinking about affordable housing where you couldn't, you definitely couldn't smoke legally on any of those grounds, like to try to make it easier for someone to have a consumption license, on site consumption license, so we could give people the opportunity to be inside instead of outside. Yes, when you're talking, when you're talking about the changes to the distances, you know, the, the 200 foot around schools, around residential neighborhoods, and those that are already in the ordinance, we're going to modify those in between first and second reading. Those would be substantial changes. Um, you know, Councilman Lavaro has, has addressed some of the changes in fees. So if you have a change, a change in the amount of the fee, I think that's something we can talk about. But if you're talking about actual changes to the distances as required by the ordinance, um, and one of the things that Councilman Lavaro is doing is he's not changing any of the any of the distances. All he's saying is you have to notify the, the CCB that you're within Correct. 200 feet of a substance abuse provider or a daycare center and that address any questions that may come up about your relationship or proximity to them to limit any kind of concerns that the board or the public may have about it. So there's no prohibitions changing. The, the, the distances are not changing. So if you want to change the dates, or change, or change the distances, the hard, the hard and fast distances contained in the ordinance between first and second reading, that would be a substantial change. Okay. So how, how soon would we be able to, um, I guess, amend this if we, if we were to vote on this Wednesday? It's, it's five years. It's five, five years. years. Five years. Mm -hmm. What happens is the way, the way the state statute is opened up is once a municipality opts into the recreational marijuana program every five years there's a window that opens up for 180 days kind of the 180 day window we have from the start of the, of the statute to tip to august 21st that 180 days every five years the other 180 day window opens up for any, any opt-out or any, any regulatory changes at the municipal level um, but those only affect operations moving forward they would not affect operations that are already in place Thank you. You're welcome. Any more questions? Okay, Sean, we good. <clears throat> okay, um, Council Person Lavaro, can you stop sharing your screen so we can put the other screen back up? I greatly appreciate it. Thank you. And just for um, the record, I did uh, attach Council Person Lavaro's amendments to the uh, ordinance uh, this morning. I don't know if you if you were able to look at that. Um, I did attach it. Um, 
which is always a good thing to have it attached so you can see everything in red. Um, but and, and those attachments that I that I did attach to the ordinance, I believe that Councilperson Lavaro said that um, that the um, none of the uh, changes that were attached to the ordinance is going to be a substantial change. So Nick, uh, is that con confirmed? That that is correct. The the proposals in red that Councilman Lavaro shared this morning, the law department has reviewed and just determined that it does not represent a substantial change in between first and second reading that would require a new first reading. However, I would remind uh, the council that as these are amendments of an ordinance that you have already voted to introduce, these amendments would need to come by way of a floor vote on Wednesday. Right. Thanks, Nick. I really appreciate it. Uh, no and and just for the record, Councilperson Prinzeri arrived at 10, 10 a.m. and Councilperson Ridley arrived at 10, 30 a.m. So now we have seven council members in attendance at 10 30. Um, our last second reading ordinance is item 4.3 city ordinance 21-054 an ordinance amending chapter 254 property maintenance and chapter 160 fees and charges to require routine structural and fa fake fa facade inspections excuse me for certain buildings within the city of jersey city any questions or comments on this ordinance okay hearing none we will have a public hearing on the 2021 West Side Avenue Special Improvement Assessment Roll and Budget. And then we will go into our regular public request for a hearing. And then we move on to our petitions and communications items 6.1 through 6.45. Any questions or comments on those? Okay. And we have our officer communications items 7.1 through 7.14. Any questions or comments on those? Ready? Moving on, report of directors items 8.1 through 8.18. Any questions or comments on those? Okay. Then we have our claims, which we'll be taking a vote on. And then we move on to our resolutions. Okay, first resolution, item 10.1, City Resolution 21-544, a resolution authorizing an emergency temporary appropriation. Item 10.2, resolution 21-545, a resolution of the City of Jersey City authorizing the circulation of a preliminary official statement and financial, excuse me, and final official statement in connection with the sale of the City's bond anticipation note series 2021D and approving a continuing disclosure certificate with respect to said notes of the city and authorizing and or ratifying other actions in connection therewith. Item 10.3 City Ordinance 21-546 resolution authorizing to settle assessment appeals filed before the tax court of New Jersey on various properties. Item 10.4 resolution 21-547 Resolution supporting liberty of liberty for the Cuban people. Item 10.5, resolution 21-548 is a resolution commemorating the opening of Curly's Barong. Item 10.6, resolution 21-549, resolution honoring the life and legacy of Pedro Pete Barreros. Excuse me. Item 10.7, Resolution 21-550 is a resolution honoring Mr. William Henry Couch on the occasion of his 95th birthday. God bless. Item 10.8, Resolution 21-551, the resolution honoring Elizabeth Francis on the occasion of her 100th birthday. God bless her too. Item 10.9, Resolution 21-552 is a resolution honoring Mrs. Christine Wells Rivers on the occasion of her 103rd birthday. God bless her as well. Great. Item 10.10, .10, resolution 21-553 is a resolution appointing Victor Negron Jr. as a member of the Jersey City Redevelopment Agency. Item 10.11, resolution 21-554 is a resolution reappointing Councilperson Denise Ridley as a member of the Jersey City Redevelopment Agency. Item 10.12, resolution 21-555 is a resolution reappointing councilperson at large, Daniel Rivera, 
as a member of the Jersey City Redevelopment Agency. Item 10.13, resolution 21-556 is a resolution approving the appointment of individuals to the Jersey City Arts and Cultural Trust Fund Committee. Item 10.14, resolution 21-557 is a resolution reappointing Amando Molina as a full-time judge of the Jersey City Municipal Court. Item 10.15, resolution 21-558, a resolution adopting and ratifying the 2021-2022 budget of the West Side Avenue Special Improvement District of the City of Jersey City. And item 10.16, resolution 21-559 is a resolution accepting the assessment role of the 2021-2022 West Side Avenue Special Improvement District of the City of Jersey City. Does anyone, any council members have any questions for the West Side Avenue Special Improvement District? We have representatives here present to address any questions or comments that you uh, any of you may have. OK, hearing none, thank you representatives of the West Side Avenue Special Improvement District for joining us. Appreciate it. OK, item 10.17 resolution 21-560 is a resolution ratifying an emergency contract award to Paragon Restoration Corp for the repairs to the ceiling in the city clerk's office at City Hall for the Department of Administration Division of Architecture. I greatly uh, appreciate your consideration, council members, for this resolution. Uh, it affects yours truly, the office, and it's in desperate need of these repairs. Thank you. Item 10.18, resolution 21-561 is a resolution of the Municipal Council of the City of Jersey City, urging the Jersey City Municipal Utilities Authority to refund homeowners and repeal the solid waste charge, otherwise known as the water tax. Item 10.19, resolution 21-562 is a resolution reaffirming the commitment and objective of the Jersey City Green Team. Item 10.20, resolution 21-563 is a resolution accepting grant funds for the calendar year 2021 Clean Communities Grant for the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection. Item 10.21, resolution 21-564 is a resolution authorizing the City of Jersey City to apply for the New Jersey Department of Environmental, Environmental Protection Green Acres funding. Item 10.22, resolution 21-565 is a resolution authorizing the City of Jersey City Department of Recreation <laughs> Development to apply for the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection Green Acres Programs Urban Park Initiative Grant. Item 10.23, resolution 21-566 is a resolution authorizing the execution of a contract with Hudson County Schools of Technology for the rental of six buses with drivers for the Department of Recreation Youth Development's 2021 Summer Fund 2.0 Camp. Item 10.24, Resolution 21-567 is a resolution ratifying the emergency contract to Structures Unlimited, Inc. for the repairs to Persian Field Pool Roof for the Department of Recreation. Sorry, can someone just speak to that? Like what happened? Yeah. There? Sure, Councilman. Um, this is Lucy McLaughlin, Director of the Department. Uh, the roof at the Pershing Pool is supposed to be retractable. Uh, however, the uh, machinery, if you will, that actually can make open and close it is not even on the roof any longer. So the panels are actually sliding open. So there is a brief, literally an opening on the roof of the pool right now. So Structures Unlimited is the entity that uh, built the roof and installed it. Uh, we did unsuccessfully put the project out to bid to see about putting a, a new roof on with the Department of Architecture. It was excessive, uh, so we are moving forward with the emergency repairs to uh, put the mechanisms back up to be able to close uh, the roof at this juncture and as well to uh, coat the exterior of the panels, which is a UV protectant and should uh, as per the company gives about 10 to 15 years of additional life uh, to the to the panels themselves. And I, I just want to piggyback on that director. Uh, this is one of the uh, 
when Councilman Yoon was alive, and I'm not sure if Councilman Lavarro, you was there with us. We did the walkthrough with Councilman Yoon. This was one of the concerns that they had that this was not, it was not retracting wide. It was almost a little bit, you know, scary. So I'm glad that this is on board to, to, to get fixed. This was one of, uh, this was one of Councilman Yoon's biggest, one of his concerns. And I'm glad that it's getting done, hopefully. Uh, Councilman Robinson, will it also open and close or is it just to permanently keep it closed? No, the point is to actually return it to how it's supposed to function and how it was built. So once this, uh, once these mechanical parts are put back up there, the idea is that the roof will once again, um, or perhaps maybe first, right, will be able to open and close. So that increases uh, ventilation, increases the airflow. It also just like increases the experience at the pool. Uh, and moving forward, you'll see in our budget, it uh, shouldn't be about, you know, three or $4,000, but an annual maintenance contract uh, at the, you know, beginning of the spring to have Structures Unlimited come down and check everything out and make sure we're good to go for every season. And, and the 15 years, is that just for the UV that you said we were, I guess, painting on top, or is it 15 years for like a warranty? Uh, it's not an official warranty, but this company actually, they use a building, like they literally have their office in a building that has the exact same roof. And they said by their practice, um, it, it, it gives you about, you know, uh, 10 to 15 years of, of extension of use of what you have. So is there any warranty, one year, 90 days, anything? Uh, I'm not sure, Councilman, that there is a, I, I don't believe we put anywhere in the wording um, a, a warranty. Uh, this is obviously the product that this company installed and built, uh, so they are the most equipped to, you know, move forward on it. Uh, I can certainly ask. I, you know, I, I know as, an, as a city, obviously, it's an insured building. It's an insured um, thing like that, but I, I don't know that there's a, uh, if you will, a guarantee that the coating is going to last for X amount of years or a guarantee that the equipment will work for a certain amount of time. I can certainly inquire. Uh, yeah, I think before Wednesday, if we can just find out what the, the warranties, guarantees or anything like that is, because that the 170 we're spending is not a insured money, right? It's not sure. from our insurance policy. I can I can uh, find that information now, Councilman. Thank you. Council President. If, before we move forward, can I take us back um, to two, two yeah, items? Okay. My apologies. So, um, an item. Can I um, finish this one, Rolando? Yeah, I'm, I have no further questions. Unless others do. Go ahead. Okay. Um, resolution ten point two zero uh, related to the Clean Communities Grant. Um, John, can we get the um, the budget for twenty twenty? I'm sorry, the the twenty twenty one budget for the grant, and then can you give us an expenditure report for the twenty twenty budget? Yeah, that's no problem, Councilman. I have that to you tomorrow. Thank you. And then with regard to 10.21 and 10.22, um, the, the the total match on both grants, can you give me the the amount on that? So Councilman Brian might speak more um, cogently to the exact match, uh, but though the 10.22 is, rel is related to Leonard Gordon Park and the improvements um, happening there. Uh, I know it's a two point, it's an estimated $2.4 million project and we're applying for a half a million dollar um, funding here from the NJDEP Green Acre Parks Urban Park Initiative Grant. Okay. Um, and is the money, um, and I don't know if, again, if Brian or, or John can answer this, Brian Weller being that, is, is the, any matching dollars already budgeted currently in our capital, capital budgets? I think I can speak to that, Councilman. Uh, we have we have the 500,000 match with capital funding already allocated towards uh, the park improvements. So if we were to win this award, obviously we could do more with the money we already have. Okay, thank you. Sure. I have no further questions. Okay, anyone else? Thank you, Director. Thank Go ahead, you. Sean. Okay. 
Alrighty, on to item 10.25, resolution 21-568 is a resolution authorizing an agreement with, excuse me, an agreement between the City of Jersey City and the Port Authority Trans Hudson Corporation regarding the use of space located at or nearby to One Path Plaza, Jersey City, New Jersey 07306. Item 10.26, resolution 21-569 is a resolution authorizing a police service agreement between the City of Jersey City and the PGA Tour Inc. for police fire services at the Liberty National Golf Club in connection with the 2021 Northern Trust Golf Tournament. Thank you, Sean. I, uh, I just a uh, yep. quick note sure. for that, uh, Council. Um, any um, individuals in uniform that were needed for uh, the uh, operations of the PGA Tour um, <clears throat> and its facility during that uh, weekend um, it's fully reimbursable to the city, and that's what this uh, agreement provides, that um, every dollar, whether it be overtime or regular pay, um, will be funded and reimbursed uh, through the PGA Tour. Okay. Thank you, John. Uh, sorry, sorry. Um, so, go ahead. Is, are all of the officers off-duty? I mean, I know you said overtime. Will it all be off-duty work? Uh, yes, Councilman, pr primarily um, off duty, but in, in the event that there was an actual incident and overtime was accrued, um, it'd be eligible as well. So so we won't be pulling people from the south to west that are regularly scheduled for the area to be down there, correct? Uh, these will be additional uh, posts. Thank you. Okay, on to item 10.27, resolution 21-570 is a resolution of the City of Jersey City authorizing a cooperation agreement with the Jersey City Redevelopment Agency regarding Central Avenue Block 2901. Item. I to speak to this. I'm sorry. Yeah. Council, I, I, I can speak briefly for this. Uh, this is, it, you had passed the redevelopment uh, plan Back, at, back in May. So this authorized the JCRA as your agent to effectuate the terms of your plan as by way of this agreement. So I, believe, I believe the rebuild plan was passed by the uh, council back in May. So, um, I don't know if you can provide me a, a, an opinion on this, but um, th there was just a, um, uh, a, the court just recently ruled on the inclusionary zoning ordinance for the city. And there were references in, I believe this is the same plan that we just recently adopted, correct? Um, you, you you adopted this plan in May. Yeah. So the references in that plan to the inclusionary zoning ordinance. Yeah, yeah. Excuse me? But it, it's um, hard for me to hear because they bang it outside. They okay. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry, outside. I'm sorry, Council President. That's uh, uh, the, uh, the cultural affairs event going on on the balcony right next to me. So I'll, I'll try to mute myself when I'm not talking, but if you no, can't hear me, I'm sorry. But I hear it too. You don't have to worry. I hear it. That's why it's not even you. I hear it from the outside window. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, What's if the, you could the, um, give, give me um, um, uh, an idea of what the, um, I and mean, you don't have to do it today, but um, some sort of memo with regard to the impact of uh, that ruling as it pertains to that redevelopment plan, as well as any others that have references to the IZO itself. Yeah, we will we will certainly review that. Obviously, we don't have that for you today. Um, sure. yeah, but this this the resolution before you right now is limited to authorizing the JCR to be your agent to effectuate the plan that you, you passed back in May. But as to the any any developments to this plan or any changes or any analysis of this plan in relation to last Thursday, I do not have that for you today. Okay. Okay. Okay, Sean. Sorry about that. OK, very good. Item 10.28, resolution 21-571 is a resolution authorizing the submission of a grant application for funding from the fiscal year 2022 municipal aid program and execute a grant agreement with the New Jersey Department of Transportation for Westside Avenue Streetscape Project for the city of Jersey City. Item 10.29, resolution. Is there any match on this one as well? 
Uh, no, Councilman, this this should cover the entire project. Right. Um, so this is a municipal aid and we try to make them so it will cover a majority, if not the entire project. And this one should cover uh, almost the entire project. OK. Right. Thank you. Yep. OK, item 10.29, resolution 21-572. It's a resolution authorizing the submission of a grant application for funding for the fiscal year 2022 Journal Square Transit Village Improvement Project and execute a grant agreement with the New Jersey Department of Transportation for the city of Jersey City. Same question. No, again, um, this one should cover uh, the entire the entire uh, improvements we set to to do around Journal Journal Square. Uh, this this um, grant we try to obviously write to be the most effective. Um, this needed to be within a certain uh, transit village. Uh, Journal Square is probably in the most need of updating uh, for both pedestrians um, at intersections, whether it be crosswalks, ADA compliance. Uh, we can we can do as much as we can do with this grant. So. Um, whatever we get with this grant, we will spread those dollars to make whatever improvements we can to back into that number. So this this will be the entirety of the work. There's no there's no local match for this council members, and um, this is for improvements to Bergen Square. We received two hundred fifty thousand dollars in the previous cycle for the same. Uh, project and we just want to, you know, double the amount to have more of an impact in Bergen Square. Um, so that's what this application is for. Okay. All right. Item 10.30, 10 resolution 21 573. It's a resolution authorizing the submission of a grant application for funding from the fiscal year 2022 bikeways program and execute a grant agreement with the New Jersey Department of Transportation for Cave and Point bike project for the city of Jersey City. Questions? Any match? Again, no match. Thanks. Item 10.31, resolution 21-574 is a resolution authorizing the award of a contract to PL Custom Emergency Vehicles for the refurbishment and related work to the mass care unit apparatus for the Department of Public Safety Division of Fire. Council, the uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the fire department um, took another look at their mass care unit and uh, feel that there's more useful life out of it uh, with these um, <clears throat> refurbished items. Um, so we're just asking the council to consider, you know, expanding the life of, of that unit. Um, and then at the next council meeting, I will be presenting a lease agreement for two new apparatus, and I will make sure that somebody from the fire department's here there to discuss. Okay, item 10.32, resolution 21-575 is a resolution authorizing the renewal of a contract with Safeware Inc. for the cleaning decontamination, inspection, and repair of all firefighting protective gear and accessories to meet NFPA standards through the Op OPIA Partners Public Sectors Co-op co contract for the Department of Public Safety Division of Fire. Item 10.33, resolution 21-576 is a resolution ratifying the award of a contract to Periscope Holdings bid sync for online bidding services through the Purchasing Solutions Alliance Cooperative for the Department of Administration Division of Purchasing. Item 10.34, Resolution 21-577 is a resolution authorizing the contract with Brown and Brown Metro LLC as an extraordinary unspecifiable service to provide the city of Jersey City with insurance consulting services and to be the city's broker of record for obtaining and maintaining the city's dental benefits. Uh, I have a question um, on this, but um, actually, can I just go back one um, prior to the broker? Uh, which one is that? The bidding services. Um, so, so given our um, our recently passed um, set aside ordinance, 
Um, I, I remember um, a, a constituent, Barbara Camacho, speaking about um, bid sync and how we our utilization of those that that's that software and technology. Um, and I don't know if uh, anyone can speak to that about um, using it more robustly and so forth, using more of their features and services. And if someone can speak to that as to what uh, um, our utilization of those those tools, because she, she suggested that we could use it more effectively to address kind of the, the disparities and to address the kind of the need to uh, address uh, getting more minorities um, and ensuring that that data was updated, I guess, in the whole systems and all that kind of stuff. Yep, sure, Councilman. So um, that is a whole new initiative that the city's undertaken. <clears throat> Excuse me. We've been working with our not only BitSync, but with the um, um, financial system because um, they, they obtain and hold all the information for the vendors and the contracts. And we're building a platform that specifically um, <clears throat> basically creates a data pool for um, those minority and small business um, operations and that we've been working with BidSync and we're trying to develop uh, something unique for us that um, when a bid, <clears throat> excuse me, when a uh, purchase order is presented that it would go directly to those uh, pooled agencies first. Um, so that's something we're working on and then um, we're also working to, to merge two systems to interact um, to provide, you know, additional data as far as uh, reporting as to the percentage of the contracts that are being utilized for small business minority owners. Um, um, you know, and then inside bin, <coughs> excuse me, inside BidSync, um, you know, we, we are asking the, um, the department directors that if they do not provide um, the contract to one of these protected classes as to the reasons why, and then we're going to use those reasons to, to further update and expand our um, outreach through BidSync, whether it be uh, additional advertising or advertising by different means. And, um, you know, so we're working proactively um, and, and continuing this contract with BidSync and um, Noel um, from our financial services software to create a data center uh, specifically for um, that. And um, I could have uh, purchasing provide an, an update to council um, as to what we're as uh, what we're doing with that. <clears throat> thank you, thank you, John. Joyce. Yeah. People are outside for Michael Young. I think they're getting yeah, ready. Yeah, I know. I just send, I just sent my assistant out there to see if they start. If they start, and then we'll just take a break and go out. Right. Okay. 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 Um, I, I'm ten point three four on Brown and Brown Metro. Um, is this a new contract, or have we been using this broker previously? <laughs> Uh, for starters, no relation to John Metro. <laughs> um, oh. This is a, a continuous um, vendor that we've been using, and uh, we did do um, bids again this year. Um, we received three bids, and they were the most competitive. Um, <clears throat> they help us. It's a sixty thousand dollar contract, and they help us take a look at our claims, um, some of the new prescriptions that are coming out, and new dental procedures, and and how to fit them into the open program and the closed program, and continuing to work with dentists and uh, specialists as to um, how they align with with our uh, cost benefit. I believe Councilman, you may have been using them for two or three years or, uh, at this point. OK. <clears throat> I have no further questions. OK, item 10.35, resolution 21-578 is a res resolution ratifying a contract with Accusure, Accusure LLC as a extraordinary unspecifiable service to provide the city of Jersey City with insurance consulting services and to the city's broker of record for obtaining and maintaining the city's health benefits prescription and stop loss insurance plans. Item 10.36 resolution 21-579 is a resolution authorizing the execution of an agreement between Newport Senna LLC and the city of Jersey City to enable access through the mall at 8th Street on Marin Boulevard, 9th Street and Marin Boulevard and Washington Boulevard. Item 10.37, resolution 21-580 is a resolution authorizing the City of Jersey City to enter into a jurisdictional agreement with the New Jersey 
Turnpike Authority, the New Jersey Department of Transportation, and the City of Bayonne in connection with the construction of improvements to Interchange 14A of the New Jersey Turnpike. Item 10.38, Resolution 21-581. It's a resolution authorizing the award of a contract to Murray Paving and Concrete LLC for the 2021 Citywide Speed Hump Project Number 2021-003-T for the Department of Administration, Division of Engineering, Traffic and Transportation. Item 10.39, Resolution 21-582 is a resolution authorizing the award of a contract to Verizon Connect Fleet USA LLC for the GPS services for the city fleet through source well cooperative purchasing for the Department of Public Works Division of Auto Automotive Maintenance. Okay, council members, before I move on with the rest of the agenda, there is a program that's going to be um, uh, starting very soon for the late council person Michael Young. So we're going to take a short break and we will be back as soon as we possibly can. Uh, thank you very much for your cooperation and we will uh, be back in about 10 to 15 minutes. Sean, we don't we don't sign off, right? We just leave it, right? No, no, we're just gonna <laughs> we're gonna put up we're gonna put up a a, um, a little blurb saying that we'll be back in a moment. You know, okay. the, this the uh, meeting will be back as soon as possible. Okay. Okay. Thank so you. We don't have to. No. Okay. We'll be right back. Thank you very much.
Okay, we're going to get back, started back up here. Sorry, we took a little longer than expected, but um, it was for good reason to remembering our former colleague, former council member, Michael Young. May God rest his soul. And thank you for your patience and cooperation, everyone. All right, with that being said, we left off at um, item 10.39, so we're going to move on to item 10.40. Resolution 21-583 is a resolution authorizing the award of an open-end contract to Power Concrete, Inc. for the 2021 on-call concrete ADA ramps at various locations, project number 20. 21-007-E for the Department of Administration Division of Engineering, Traffic and Transportation. Item 10.41, Resolution 21-584 is a resolution authorizing the award of an open-end contract to Smith Sandy Asphalt Construction, Inc. for the 2021 Road Program Asphalt Resurfacing Project Number 2021-008-E for the Department of Administration Division of Engineering, Traffic and Transportation. Item 10.42, Resolution 21-585 is a resolution accepting the Hudson Regional Health Commission 2021 assessment to the City of Jersey City to provide a broad range of environmental health services pursuant to the County Environmental Health Act. Item 10.43, Resolution. Can we get, I'm sorry, can I just interrupt there? Um, could we get a report from Hudson Region? Yeah, I can. Uh, I can get you a report. We, we, we coordinate a report uh, monthly, and uh, Dr. Bastola sits on the board because you know Hudson County Regional is made up of the board of all the health officers across the uh, municipalities of the county. Uh, happy to do it. Uh, they've done a lot of work over the last several months uh, supporting our, our efforts uh, environmental health wise. So. Does, that, does their work um, go into the realm of COVID? Uh, not from us, uh, technically. Uh, we don't pay for that. The county has been paying for their COVID related work uh, because they're They've not done, a, I mean, they've done a lot uh, related to COVID, but uh, they're getting a separate grant from the county to execute on COVID because it's reimbursed through FEMA and uh, CARES Act. So this is uh, our standard support services uh, with Hudson Regional Health okay. Commission on an annual basis. Okay. Thank you, George. Um, before we keep moving on, Council President, can I just um, backtrack to 10.38? Just ask uh, Paul Russo mm -hmm. for a list of, or or to traffic and engineering, um, a list of the locations for the speed humps. Paul, you we, can send that, right? Yep, we can send that. I believe uh, the list is probably around 120 or 130. Uh, that mm -hmm. we're shooting to complete this year, and we can absolutely send you that. Um, so far, I think we're around between 60 and 70, um, and we do anticipate being able to complete that whole list. Uh, the first portion, what, what we've done so far, has been on the co-op, but it's actually the same contractor uh, that won the public bid, uh, which is on today's agenda, um, and He's been doing a terrific job and terrific with his production. So we do anticipate being able to complete that whole list of 130 locations this year. Great, thank you. You got it. Okay, 10.43, resolution 21-586. is a resolution authorizing the city of Jersey, excuse me, authorizing the Jersey City Department of Health and human services to apply for and accept grant funds from the Kresge Foundation. Item 10.44, resolution 21-587 is a resolution authorizing the waiver of the 20-day waiting period pursuant to NJSA 
40 semicolon 69A-181 for ordinance 21-053, amending chapter 84, chapter 160, chapter 304, and chapter 345 to establish regulations for cannabis establishments and cannabis distri distributors and authorize the transfer tax and user tax on the sale transfer of cannabis or cannabis items by a cannabis establishment. Item 10.45, resolution 21-588 is a resolution of the Municipal Council of the City of Jersey City authorizing the submission of a strategic plan to the Hudson County Department of Health and Human Services for funding the Jersey City Municipal Alliance to compact alcoholism and substance abuse programs. Item 10.46, resolution 21-589 is a resolution rejecting all bids received by the City of Jersey City on August 11, 2020 to provide janitorial services for the Department of Public Works Division of Recycling. Item 10.47. I'm sorry, this is for janitorial services, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so could I um, just ask, uh, uh, this is Councilman Lavaro. Um, so our janitorial services are still on a month to month and we've also, as mm -hmm. I understand it, with a contractor and then we also are, have hired um, internal part-time employees. Is that uh, accurate? Uh, yes, that is correct, Councilman. Um, we are on a month to month. Um, <clears throat> we just have to, uh, we're going to send the janitorial contract out again. Um, we just had to include some additional um, service areas, including uh, the former MUA facility down on 440, which is now being uh, utilized by public safety and um, <clears throat> potentially what will be the addition of um, the new public safety building and uh, a few other small pockets um, that we had to fulfill um, with COVID. Um, we do have some part-time employees um, that are help facilitate the current contract um, and we hire them in-house. Um, we did a cost analysis um, internally to determine if it would be more cost effect effective to bring the services in in-house completely or continue our uh, partnership um, with the current vendor and we've agreed on a hybrid for now so um, the full-time employees will remain uh, month to month as and, and then we'll, uh, we'll do the uh, RFP um, next month uh, to go out again and include those additional um, locations that'll be approved and um, it'll be specified continuous upon uh, the full-time employees being um, provided by the company uh, with the backing of uh, the 32BJ um, living uh, cost of living uh, analysis and uh, we'll continue our part-time um, and seasonal employees for uh, additional overlays including um, some of the sanitation requirements for the parks um, they'll help facilitate uh, some of our added needs around uh, seasonal, um, you know, startup for the camps, uh, snow removal if necessary. Um, so we have a little bit more flexibility with those part timers and we can use them on an as needed basis. Are, are the part timers on, on kind of regular schedules or are they, as you said, on an as needed basis? Um, so the, the those additional um, um, needs would be on an as needed basis, but they are rotating on a, on a um, regular schedule now on a part time hourly basis um, to help with some of our parks initiatives and uh, some additional upkeep within the city buildings. OK, could I get a list of the um, um, how many employees we've hired as part time um, sure. internally and then and then also their salary. So I understand I know the mayor executed the executive order. Um, around uh, increasing from $15 to $17 an hour. Um, if you could tell me what the, the salaries for these employees were they sure. for. Sure, Councilman. Um, I believe the last time I checked, I'll get you the data, of course, but uh, Sonia had um, employed at roughly 15 uh, of these individuals. We said uh, a max of around 20 to 21. And um, right now they'd be paid at the $15 an hour. And that executive order goes into effect, uh, I believe, the 23rd or the 24th, so that's when they they would receive an adjustment. I see. Okay, just, just for um, um, and while I think um, co coming in house, I, I brought this up in our budget hearing um, when uh, discussing that. And I don't know if you were there, John, for that that particular budget here for DPW. Um, but I raised the the issue there is that um, if we're moving it in house, I'm in, in favor of that um, of doing it in house, but. Um, um, what, what I'm not in favor of is uh, 
Um, I, I know there's cost savings there, um, but um, that, that law that we that uh, applies to the contractors and sets wages, uh, wage rates and benefits for those part time employees who work um, in tax abated buildings and other locations. Um, th they should be at the same standards and rates as uh, employees who are. If we were hiring internally here, we should be adhering to similar standards and rates. Um, we should not be lowering the floor below that um, because we undermine our own authority um, in being able to uh, uh, re regulate um, those private employers. Um, if, if if we're saying that they have to pay a certain rate, but we're paying below that, um, we we don't have the the moral high ground um, to be able to make that uh, those sort of demands. So uh, I would uh, urge the administration if they're looking to bring it in house, which I'm in favor of, um, that we adhere to those same uh, adherence to those same sort of uh, standards. Uh, yep, I respect that, Councilman, and uh, thank you for your input. Um, for now, you know, um, we will be we will be looking to for at least uh, I believe the next year. Um, we'll continue the. Um, the partnership with the third party, um, you know, and obviously they are paying those wages and um, we just want to make sure we get the RFP out and the contract certified and then we can take another look at the in-house. Yeah. I have no further questions. OK, item 10.47 resolution 21-590 is a resolution of the Municipal Council of the City of Jersey City authorizing the subgrantee agreement with Waterfront Project Inc. For administering the city's COVID-19 CARES Act funds for the city community development block grant public services program on the program year April 1st, 2021 to March 31st, 2022. Can I just ask, um, who, who, is this the only um, legal assistance as we approach uh, around um, tenants and evictions or do we have other resources in play? We have other resources. Um, you had approved the uh, resolution with Northeast Legal Services earlier this year. Yeah. Uh, we're adding Waterfront Project as well as the collaborative partner in the working group with legal services. How much for Northeast? Uh, well, it's a overall 500,000, but we're doing 250,000 this year and 250,000 next year. That's for Northeast, New Jersey Legal. Yep. And then 50 for Waterfront. Okay. Yep. All righty. Item 10.48, resolution 21 591 is a resolution authorizing the award of a contract to MPG SMPA seal master for the purchase, delivery, and oversight of installation of materials needed for the new skate park flooring system at Enos, Enos Jones Park. Skate Park Replacement Project Number 2021-026 for the Department of Administration Division of Architecture. Um, I'm sorry, I'm just going to go back to uh, Director Gandula again on that. Could I just get a report on um, Northeast New Jersey Legal Services if, if they can provide us anything about the number of um, services or clients that they're servicing at this point? I'm trying to want to get a sense of the the scope of uh, need at this point. So you just to clarify, you want a report um, identifying the unmet need currently with legal services? No, what the, what, what their current um, number of clients and through through our contract that they're servicing at this point. Um, we could get that so I can get give us a sense of the, the need for tenant assistance um, around that. If you have other measures or metrics that you can share with me around that as to the actual need and as well as uh, projected needs around this, uh, happy, whatever you have, we'd be happy to have, have that. Okay. All right, so projected need and the clients that they're currently servicing overall. Yep. Okay. Thanks. OK, item 10.49, resolution 21-592. It's a resolution authorizing the award of a contract to Play Power LT Farmington, Inc. for the purchase, delivery, installation of a new playground system for the Fanmont Park Improvements, project number 2019-045 through the Sourcewell Cooperative Contract 
number 010521-LTS-04 for the Department of Administration Division of Architecture. Uh, do we have the architecture on? Yes, sir. We're here. Hey, hey, Brian. How are you, sir? Um, I just, just a, a, a guess, a heads up on the, the timeline. Uh, I don't have a lead time yet. They're waiting on a PO before they can place the order. Uh, there is a uh, historically long lead time right now. Um, probably going to be uh, at least eight weeks. Might be a little bit longer, but I won't know until we actually place the order with the PO. So now we have to place this order. Um, do we have to, I guess, wait the, the 20 days? Um, I'm not sure if I can answer that. Uh, BA? Purchasing, maybe. Purchasing, OK. I don't think so, Councilman. I think as soon as um, this is approved on Wednesday, we can yeah. move forward with the PO and give um, the contractor a notice to proceed. And then they can go ahead and order the materials. OK, thank you. Anyone else? OK, thank you. Okay. Item 10.50, Resolution 21-593 is a resolution authorizing the award of a contract to Kruger International for the purchase, delivery, and installation of office furniture for City Hall, City Clerk's Office through the Educational Service Commission of New Jersey, formerly the Middlesex Regional Educational Service Commission. Item 10.51, Resolution 21-594 is a resolution supplementing the manual of loading zone designations of the City of Jersey City, designating a loading zone in front of 81 SIP Avenue, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Item 10.52 is a resolution, resolution 21-595 is a resolution supplementing the manual of loading zone designations of the city of Jersey City, designating a loading zone in front of 627 Newark Avenue, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Item 10.53, resolution 21-596 is a resolution commemorating Harrison Avenue from Monticello Avenue to Crescent Avenue in the city of Jersey City to Reverend Edward Larry Hall as Reverend Edward Hall Way. Item 10.54, resolution 21-597. It's a resolution commemorating the 13th, 13th Street between Marin Boulevard and Washington Boulevard in the city of Jersey City to Generato Angelo Jerry Mecca as Jerry Mecca Way. Item 10.55, resolution 21-598 is a resolution authorizing the settlement of a lawsuit. FNU Ramadi, Ramdai, sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, versus the city, versus the Jersey City Parking Authority. Item 10.56, resolution 21-599 is a resolution authorizing the award of a professional service contract to F. FC3 Architecture and Design LLC in connection with the architectural and engineering services for the 394 Central Avenue Senior Center relocation project number 2021-039 for the Department of Administration Division of Architecture. Can I someone just speak to that one? I'm sorry. It's okay. Uh, sure. Okay. <clears throat> sorry. Uh, thanks, Council President. So um, with some of the uh, renovations that we've done in City Hall and, and uh, the opening of the new City Hall annex uh, facilities, we were able to free up some office space on the Central Avenue side, um, bringing our financial offices into City Hall um, and uh, freeing up that space. And uh, with the dire conditions of the Connor Center, um, we felt that you know we should take another look at some of the uh, areas that we can implement uh, additional senior uh, uh, programming, especially in the Heights, and uh, we took a look at the uh, the what was the existing office space at the Central Avenue uh, facility, and uh, we're going to retrofit it to accommodate some additional um, senior uh, programming. So um, we've been working with HHS uh, for their needs and kind of the layout of it, 
and um, this contract will allow for the uh, planning uh, for us to build out um, those needs. And is this budgeted in the current uh, uh, budget? Uh, it would be a capital expense that was uh, that was approved, Councilman. OK, yeah, thank you. OK, item, item 10.57, resolution 21-600 is honoring Captain Pablo M. Barros for his service and sacrifice in the defense of the nations of the Philippines and United States of America for the causes of freedom and democracy. Mm -hmm. Item 10.58, resolution 21-601 is commemorating the opening of Carol's Caliban Bev's Bakery and RJP Mart. Mm. Item 10.59, Resolution 21-602 is a resolution opposing the Passaic Valley Sewerage Commission's proposed gas burning power plant and supporting the use of renewable energy to achieve its resiliency goals. Uh, council members, um, this is Councilman Lamar. I, I have that resolution. Um, I, I'm going to, and I completely support this, but I'm going to withdraw this. I had meant to speak to everyone in the council prior to this getting on, but with everything that was going on with the cannabis um, legislation, I never really got around to reaching out to everyone. Um, but now you have a copy of it, and uh, perhaps we can bring this back in September if anyone wants to co-sponsor it. I believe the um, Food and Water Watch had reached out to all the members of the city council about this uh, initially. Um, and so if you'd like to co-sponsor the resolution, it was a bottle resolution that they provided. Uh, please let me know and we can just update the information appropriately. Um, I'll, I'll withdraw it at this time and um, reach out to folks about this as well. Okay. Item 10.60, resolution 21-603 is a resolution of the Municipal Council of the City of Jersey City referring an inclusionary zoning ordinance to the planning board pursuant to NJSA 40 semicolon 55D-64. Okay, Rolando. Uh, count, yeah, council members, this is me again. Um, so uh, I'm sure you're all aware that uh, recently the Superior Court of uh, New Jersey, uh, Judge Tarullo, ruled on a lawsuit that was brought about the inclusionary zoning ordinance that the council adopted in October of 2020. Um, the judge uh, struck down the, the law, and I won't go into the details here, in this meeting, but um, in short, uh, struck down the inclusionary zoning ordinance. Um, this um, resolution was going to refer is going to refer a new in inclusionary zoning ordinance to the planning board for review and recommendations to the planning board. Um, I recently um, had conversation communications, I should say, with uh, Mayor Fulop, um, and then during the break, had a very brief conversation with Council President Waterman, um, and uh, I'm going to withdraw this uh, resolution at this time. Um, with the understanding that we're looking to move forward with having some meetings and discussions to uh, discuss um, a mutually beneficial outcome around this uh, an inclusionary zoning ordinance um, so that we can uh, have a, a strong, vibrant, a strong, affordable housing policy here in Jersey City. Um, so if anyone has questions, feel free to ask me um, the ordinance itself that's being proposed, but uh, I, I will be withdrawing it from Wednesday's uh, council meeting. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, look to, to set up meetings around that mm -hmm. uh, with uh, the mayor, the council president, and all stakeholders um, mm -hmm. to have the table along with the plaintiffs who are involved with a lot of being fair share housing in New Jersey Appleseed, as well as any other interveners. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay, and item 10.61, resolution 21 0, excuse me. 21-604 is a resolution introducing amendments to the calendar year 2021 municipal budget. Council members, um, you should have, uh, a, there's a new attachment to this resolution. It was just yeah. updated this morning before we started the meeting. I did update it in iCompass and you should have the most recent attachment to that if there's any questions. Mm -hmm. John, okay. can you go over these, or Kyle, can you go over uh, this uh, amendments? The amendment, yeah, quickly. I'm here. I'm here, Councilman. Um, so do you want me to touch on every every uh, account or just the major items? So I don't know, whatever the council oh. prefers. Um, we have a lot going on. 
Right. Is uh, it a lot? What What did you do? <laughs> yeah. So I just want to preface before I start going over is that um, the state's still reviewing this. Um, so it's not a finalized uh, amendment until they give us the OK to proceed. Um, I actually had some back and forth with them this morning uh, on a couple items. So there may be some small changes based on their recommendations, you know, before the end of the day. But um, for now, you know, I'll go through uh, what's presented to everybody. So. Mm -hmm. Sean, are you going to share the um, attachment? Yeah. Yep. yep, I'll put it up. And just the the new attachment that Sean was referencing was just um there was an error in one of the subtotals, so that was what was corrected. Sean, am I sharing or you? I'm sorry, I'm just trying to get it up on the screen. Just okay. bear with me one sec. I'll share it. Can everybody see that? Yep. OK, so I'll just I'll start from the top. I'll go section by section. So section B is our state aid. Um, that's just a revenue item that um, we had to adjust slightly downward based on whatever the state's calculation was. So it's only 36,000 there. And um, section F is our. A majority is our grants. Um, you'll see those two reductions to grants that was just an adjustment because originally the amounts included what we thought was the match um, but you know we reduced those to accurately reflect what the grant award is and as Brian Weller alluded to earlier we had some capital funds already in place so that's the justification for those uh, reductions but um, the biggest thing here is the ARP funding you see that amount in 41 41 million um, that is the second portion of our what we're anticipating in the budget this year. So on section G there, you'll see the reduction um, for COVID-19 relief. Um, that's one of the major things the state came back and said that um, for that section of the budget, the number we're supposed to allocate is just for the revenue loss um, based on the calculation worksheet they gave us. So they want us to separate, you know, what our revenue loss was and what's offsetting existing appropriations. So you'll see that is uh, the difference there. And there's also, um, a discrepancy of about seven million there. That is money we were anticipating for a um, a FEMA claim to kind of free up some additional CARES Act dollars from last year. Um, we're trying to work with the county and FEMA at the moment to try to um, approve that for us and give the state something more concrete because FEMA hasn't hasn't officially approved our claim and in in turn the the county hasn't adjusted our allocation yet officially. So that's um, some revenue items we're hoping to be able to realize, um, you know, and get the, uh, the state the documentation by the end of the day. So there may be an adjustment there. Um, the other revenue items are just um, subtotals. You see the summary here. No change in surplus, um, no change in our local revenues. And um, so Kyle. the amount to be raised by taxation. Kyle, uh, can I jump in? Excuse me? Cal, can I jump in? Yeah, go ahead. All right, just just going on the the revenues and what you went over there. So, the um, um, that ARP funding. So that's a new addition. And essentially, it's um, COVID nineteen relief was reduced to offset the and, and that was offset by the ARP funding increase, which is just kind of a yeah. So the sixty nine million dollars specifically from the ARP funding, um, twenty eight million. You see. Uh, is going to revenue loss in section G. And um, that grant for 41 million is to offset appropriations um, currently in the budget. Okay. If that makes sense. So councilman, I, I'll jump in. Um, so what we did in the introduced budget is we put the whole award allotment into one line and then the, the state came back and gave us further guidance and said just split that number up into sh reflective of what was revenue loss and what's being expended um, through operations. So we just took that number and, and divided it. I see. So sec section F is revenue loss. Is that right? Section G. 
Section Section G reflects revenue loss. Correct. COVID nineteen relief is revenue loss. Uh, yeah, that's the relief again. Yeah. And then and then the other one in Section F is offsetting expenses for for this, for this year. Yeah. For COVID related expenses, is that correct? Yep. I see. Okay. Um, understood. So yeah, just to jump down to the summary now. So the obviously with all these uh, amendments and we'll get to the appropriations after uh, you see line six amount to be raised by taxation that breaks down our um, to section a local tax municipal purposes. So you'll see there's a 10 million increase there to the levy amount for this uh, the municipal portion. Um, that the re big reason for that is that FEMA claim I'm talking about is approximately seven to eight million dollars that we had to reduce the budget by for now. Um, like I said, we're hoping to be able to anticipate that and you know reduce that levy amount for the year. And um, so, so next is our appropriate. So because of the, I'm sorry if I could just um, because of the change in that that allocation, um, we we actually had to reduce the ARP dollars. So total ARP dollars that were um, pro, uh, being utilized in this budget. Is that accurate or? No, the ARP funding is all there. Is that there was an additional um, uh, portion of COVID relief from FEMA due to us that we we haven't received yet. OK, so we can't claim that and that would have fallen under Section G. Section, uh, correct. Yeah, COVID 19 relief. But, um, OK, we're pretty we're pretty confident that as long as you know we coordinate with the county and FEMA and the state that they'll let us anticipate that. But just for now, this is um, what's approved and um, what we're working with at the moment. So then that local tax increasing, uh, what, what does that come to for, do, do we have a dollar amount per average household or? Yeah, it's about um, 80, like between 80 and $90. So essentially every million dollars in the levy at this point is like $10 on the average tax bill. So the original rate for introduction, um, we reduced the tax rate by 29%. As of now, in this amendment, it reflects um, a tax decrease of 25 and a, and a quarter percent. OK. Yep. So I'll just move on to the appropriations now. Like I said, we had to break up that um, ARP allocation into two separate uh, revenue items. And as a result, we also had to reduce all of our appropriations to reflect that and show one allocation of $41 million um, within the grant side of the appropriations to you know offset, but just going through what we have in front of us. Um, first portion here is human resources. It's just um, some tra uh, employee transfers uh, those directly offset. And um, the next bunch is our administration department. Um, a large portion of, of these reductions are due to the stuff we anticipated being um, offset by ARP funding. Um, you'll see in the administrator's office, there's a lot of staff dedicated to this and and the other expenses is our, um, our disaster relief contract with grant management. The one actually, you know, ensuring we're in compliance with everything and submitting our claims to, you know, whatever party needs them. And um, there's nothing really else major here. Um, IT, we increase the salary wages. That is for additional, um, you know, seasonal staff we might need at the end of the year. Um, to help us to assist with like the Tyler program and some other IT um, functions that are in need of uh, staffing. Um, next batch is the finance department appropriations. Um, the one increase there to the budget office is just um, we're bringing over Carmen salary from community development um, for the rest of the year and the major decrease in our other expenses is we had capital funds for financial software. Um, which we we didn't have to draw down on yet because you know we had the funds in place in the budget. But being that we're losing some of this revenue, we wanted to you know move move that over. So that's where the, uh, that decrease is for. Um, and accounts control, the big decrease there is just um, for for transfers and some terminations that we're not backfilling. And uh, moving down, there's nothing major in assessor or the law department. Um, DPW, there's a lot of, of amendments. Um, a bulk of this uh, building and streets you'll see is um, and other expenses 
goes back to that janitorial contract um, that we reimbursed through CARES last year. And, you know, a lot of those costs are, we feel, are still applicable under ARP funding. Um, as well as the salary and wages, we reduced, uh, you know, for any staff, you know, doing citywide maintenance and, you know, bringing buildings up to code with whatever COVID restrictions we had in place and just things of that nature. Uh, sanitation, there's an increase in salary wages. Um, that's mostly due to the, um, the union um, settlements for 641 and, um, you know, some hi uh, new hires that were brought on since um, budget, uh, pro budget was originally proposed. Um, NID, you'll see a decrease there. I kind of, I gave Councilman, Councilwoman Ridley a heads up on this because I know it was one of her acts to have additional staff here. This reduction is just um, for the additional clean communities dollars that we're getting. So that money is going to be used to offset, you know, whatever staff uh, we bring on, you know, the rest of the year. Um, solid waste management, no big changes. Automotive, there's $150,000 in other expenses. That is for our GPS contract. Um, th there was no plan in place at the beginning of the year for this. Uh, it kind of came up over the last couple months, um, and that's how much the contract is going to be for the year for GPS for every vehicle in our fleet. Park maintenance, you'll see a reduction in salary wages. Same thing as building and streets. We have some park attendants, you know, ensuring we're all in compliance in our public parks. Um, park maintenance, other expenses. That 100000 is for some services that were provided in the beginning of the year for snow removal by um, Jeans Landscaping. Um, so I guess they kind of went out of their original intended scope of work. So that's what that adjustment is. And HHS. Obviously, with uh, ARP funding mostly towards them. Um, so these aren't reductions to any services or staff in HHS. I just want to make that clear. It's just we're moving the costs into another account. So um, the only increase here you'll see is the animal con uh, care and control contract, which was uh, renewed pretty recently. Uh, public safety, you'll see a big reduction to police salary and wages and quality of life. This also is. Um, a reflection of some of the items that we feel are reimbursable through ARP funding for unanticipated overtime, um, you know, enforcement of, like I said, just everything COVID related that public safety is doing. Um, fire, on the other hand, is just a reduction for overtime based on uh, current projections. Sal uh, communications and parking enforcement, um, there was a handful of transfers done um, during the year between those two divisions. So this kind of just reflects those um, and they pretty much offset each other. Uh, city planning is the only office in HEDC being amended. There was a conversion of an employee to full time that is reflected here and um, the other expenses is just for one of their professional services contracts. Uh, recreation, you'll see similar to HHS, this isn't a reduction in services. This is just, you know, some of the costs they have in their budget that are associated with um, COVID compliance and, and stuff of that nature. So, and then the last group there is our unclassified items, um, electricity and street lighting. Those are just reductions based on, you know, current billing um, where we thought we'd, what we need end of the year. Uh, municipal rent is a large one. Um, we're reducing that line item there, but the, the, the money for that is being moved to our debt service. Um, that was an advisement of our um, accountant because this allows us, you know, some more wiggle room within um, our departments to, you know, increase spending because we're limited to how much we can increase um, within caps uh, every year. So those are just some cap, they're considered capital lease. And um, so those will be reflected in our debt service. And like everything else, health insurance, this is um, what we're anticipating for COVID related claims. Um, based on the first two quarters of the year reporting from uh, from Horizon. So we moved that funding to a, a, a separate account as well. So if you have any questions on those groups before I jump down to the other things, um, I could touch on it if you want. Questions? Um, Kyle, um, with the... Um with the administration's um, uh, ref, uh, refund of um, the 
solid waste collection fee. Um, how are we, um, does this budget, municipal budget include uh, trash collection in there? I don't believe we have that contract under our, um, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not too, not too certain right now. I'm just drawing a blank, um, but I, I'll confirm. I believe we used to have it under director's office, but um, I think we removed yeah. that cost last year. Yeah, it's removed in councilman. It's not necessarily a direct um, offset. It's, it's uh, whatever the combination of, you know, uh, added expenses and, and revenue items, uh, you know, so it wouldn't be a dollar for dollar, like we see a reduction for that amount um, anywhere outside the line item. It doesn't impact the uh, the tax rate or or bills, um, you know, dollar for dollar in that per pro perspective. But um, there's no dollars in this budget that funds the solid waste contract. Um, only the other portion of it, which is the uh, the tipping fees or the dumping fees. All right, yeah, and that is all under the director's office. Whatever is remaining. And these are the um, the, the changes in the uh, wage from 15 to 17 increasing that minimum that's factored in the amendments uh councilman that would be uh considered part of our um uh what's that what's that account kyle the uh salary adjustment salary adjustment fund um we yeah. use that for union settlements and then this would be included uh like a, like a union settlement um for additional wages um this year that that amounts to a little over two hundred thousand um, dollars just because it's prorated uh for the remainder of the year yeah yeah I'll and that's in our unclassified section. So um, we had a million dollars allocated there, and um, you know we we were we didn't have to amend that anyway, just because you know like we like John just said, you know it's prorated for the end of the year. We're not paying out a full year of um, salary adjustments for for those individuals. So, so we have enough money in that account to be able to pay for those. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. So um, I can start going down to. Deferred charges you'll see here. Um, prior bills, just bills from 2019 and prior. Um, there's one extra that came in since um, introduction for $80. And uh, there were two over expenditures of appropriation reserves and a pro over expenditure of trust fund reserves. Um, these were reflected in our AFS. Um, for whatever reason, it was just an oversight uh, introduction. Our accountant didn't catch it. And those are just the state came back and said, you didn't add these to your budget. So we're adding those in. Um, you'll see two adjustments to our PERS and PFRS. So it's public employees retirement system and police fire retirement system. These are just some um, retro payments uh, bills that came in after the original amount was uh, was given to us. And you'll see here the unemployment insurance, $500,000 is being reduced to zero. That is also being um, covered with uh, ARP funding. So. That's in a separate account. Um, and then H1 is just a total of all those appropriations. Like I said, $41 million um, is being reduced and set up elsewhere, essentially. So going down, tax overpayments. Um, we anticipated 1.5 earlier in the year, just based on current uh, spending patterns. You know, we're only at about 300,000 year to date. So well, we were able to reduce that figure um, based on based on that uh, evaluation. And um, you'll see here the grants, they're just a mirror of what you saw in the revenue section of the of the budget amendment. So sliding down, um, capital improvements, there's a reduction of 200,000. That is because um, after review and um, the ongoing conversation with the energy savings efficient uh, incentive program, we're not going to be bonding for as much as we originally anticipated, so therefore our down payment is reduced by, you know, two hundred thousand. And uh, like I said earlier, our debt service there's um, increases here, offset and reductions elsewhere. And that brings us to our subtotals. Um, reserve on collected taxes obviously has to increase with as the levy increases. So that's the reason there. And then below that is just a summary of everything uh, I've gone over so far. So if there's any questions uh, on this portion of the amendment. Uh, I'm also going to be sharing with the council some additional notes um, once everything is finalized with the state. Um, you know, 
some more clarification on every item in the in, in this amendment that I may have not touched on uh, so far. Yeah, that that's uh, that's useful. Um, Kyle, thank you. So, Council, uh, as he, as Kyle just stated, um, we'll circulate this exact um, spreadsheet with an additional column that kind of outlines every item. And then, you know, if there's any additional um, need for conversation or, or requests, um, we can go through Kyle. Um, this is just a budget introduction, uh, sorry, amendment introduction. Um, and we're just here, waiting to hear back from the state as well. So with this uh, amendment, then um, if you get state state um, approvals uh, prior to Wednesday's council meeting, then the council would have a public hearing on this budget, and then we would also vote to adopt the budget. Is that accurate? Right. Uh, yeah. So, Councilman, um, the you know for process and procedures, we introduce it so that it gives uh, the, the clerk uh, an opportunity to amend it. And then we can approve it uh, via a special meeting or the following council meeting. OK, yeah, especially uh, obviously with a public hearing. Yes. OK, so it won't, it won't be approved at this meeting. It's just. Uh... No, uh, the law states that after introduction, we need to advertise uh, at least three days prior to a public hearing. I see. OK, yeah. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Kyle. Thank no, you, John. Welcome. OK, council members, just um, just a little point of information. I believe that we're going to uh, remove a couple of ordinances from the table agenda to cons for consideration of adoption. First one being 21-037. That was the ordinance that was dealing with the property that's located under the Pulaski Skyway. And the two bond ordinances, 21-050 and 21-051. Um, those are the ones that dealt with the energy um, bonding information. So I believe that we're, we will be um, removing, well, we'll ask for a motion to remove them from the tabled agenda and for consideration of final adoption. Mm -hmm. Other than that, if anybody has anything further. I got, uh, Sean. I just yeah. want to, uh, Council President, uh, yeah. I, I, I spoke with Council President and uh, Corporation Council. I'm going to be walking in a resolution on the uh, on the Council meeting for a street rededication for Reverend uh, Louis Alicea that he used to have the church across the street where the parking lot is in City Hall. So I'm going to be bringing that uh, resolution on on uh, Wednesday, if that's OK. Okay. Can I just ask on the um, items being removed from the uh, Catalan yeah. table agenda? Can you can you send us, uh, Sean, the uh, electronic version of those ordinances? Um, I don't see twenty one dash zero three seven on the table agenda. Just so you know. Yeah, I I think my office accidentally missed some of the um, those ordinances from the previous meetings. I will send the entire council uh, the ordinances that will be considered. Uh, from removal from the table agenda to uh, for consideration for final adoption. I'll send all three of those ordinances to you guys. Great, thank you. Motion. Okay. Council, so hold, hold one second. Council hold President, on. um, I also am trying to walk something on Wednesday. It's a resident who, you know, has suffered during COVID. She's been trying to make some adjustment to her mortgage company and she she had a, a loan from the city that was paid off, but the law department is just trying to get the paperwork situated and they have a timeline that they're on to work with the mortgage company. So if the law department gets the paperwork done, I would like to uh, kind of add that as a late uh, item on Wednesday if the law department gets the paperwork finished. Mm -hmm. If they don't get it, she can't close, right? Right, and she sent over so, the information. Then it's to necessary the for them to get it. Are they? Are they? I know they. I know this was a conversation all last week. So I just want right. the council to know this is not stuff that was not discussed. I just want them to know because we just don't walk on stuff because we try to stick close to the agenda. But this was conversation before, so yes. I, I I know. Obviously, once we get that, we can move. So. Okay, because if not, she can't close. Right, I've been working with Nick closely, so hopefully, you know, okay. fingers crossed for the resident. 
All right, then. Okay, with that being oh, said, may I have a motion oh, to adjourn? Sean, before you close, before you close, Sean. Um, yes. Just on those tabled items, um, is there any public hearing? All of the items that were um, tabled that we're going to consider for consideration of adoption were tabled after the close of the public hearing. So okay. no public hearing is required for any of those three ordinances that will be considered. Right. All right. Motion to adjourn. So I have a motion to adjourn at 12.56 p.m. by Councilperson Rivera. May I have a second? Second. Second by Council President Waterman. Second. On the motion to adjourn at 12.56 p.m., all council members present by acclamation, please say aye. 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 We are out of here at 12.56 p.m. Thank you so much, council president, members of the council, members of the administration, the team behind the scenes. Thank you so much. Without you guys, this doesn't happen. Again, as always, teamwork makes the dream work. And remember, um, members of the public, let's continue to fight this virus, do the right thing, and um, just be aware and stay safe, everybody. Have a great rest of the afternoon. Take care.